Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the Miss Explained series. Today, we're going to talk about penicillin A to Z, and the content that we're going to cover is as follows. First of all, we're going to look at the origins of penicillin, who discovered it, where, how, when, why. Second of all, we're going to look at its mechanism, how it actually works. Thirdly, we're going to explore its mechanism with World War II. And fourthly, we're going to link it to the present and perhaps with the future. Okay, first of all, moving into its origins. On a day in September 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming, a bacteriologist who was working in St. Mary's Hospital, returned from his summer vacation in Scotland to his lab in London. Upon his arrival, he realized that he left a petri dish containing Staphylococcus bacteria without a lid. Observing the petri dish, Dr. Fleming found out that a mold called Penicillin notinum had contaminated the dishes. And surrounding the mold, he observed a clear ring where there was no growth of the Staphylococcus bacteria. Putting the petri dish under his microscope, he found out that the mold, more specifically the chemical produced by the mold, had been stunning the growth of the Staphylococci. He named the chemical penicillin, and penicillin was the first ever antibiotics. But do note, the first ever antibiotics was actually Salvasan, deployed in 1910, but penicillin is usually crowned the title as it led to the golden age of antibiotics and was naturally discovered. Now that we've covered the origins, let's move on to the mechanism, how penicillin actually works. To reduce all the heavy explanation in one single line, we can conclude that penicillin works by bursting bacterial cell walls and making bacterial cells exposed to outside water and molecular pressure, which ultimately lead to the destruction of the cell. But we're going to go a little bit deeper than that. Penicillin acts on peptidoglycans, which is essentially the cornerstone of bacterial cells. The role of peptidoglycans is to create a mesh-like web structure around the plasma membrane to increase the strength of the bacterial cell walls and prevent external particles from entering the cell. What penicillin essentially does is bind the beta-lactam ring to the DD transpeptidase to prevent the peptidoglycans from cross-linking to each other. This also stuns new cell wall formation of the bacteria, which eventually means that there will be holes in the cell walls of the bacteria as bacterial multiplication involves the opening up of small holes. Because the water concentration of the surrounding fluid will then be higher than the pressure of the bacteria, external particles and water will then rush into the cell, bursting it and leading to its destruction. But people, we do have to note that penicillin is only effective against gram-positive bacteria. This is because gram-negative bacteria has a protective layer of membrane that prevents penicillin from interfering and in accessing the pen peptidoglycan layer. Alright folks, that's the end of part 1 of our penicillin lecture and we will be back next time with part 2.